It was noon time today in the center of Beijing when a man walked to the middle of the avenue of eternal peace. All right, welcome back to the Survival and Basic Badass Podcast, Kevin and Chuck. Today, well, we're going to talk about prepper items that, with inflation, you need to go out and get now. There's a couple things out there that, you know, really could disappear off the shelves. Mm -hmm. And when things get tough, you want to get ahead of things with money and, and what you're spending. And the thing is with inflation, right? You want to you want to beat it and spend your money now cuz your money might not be worth as much tomorrow as it is today. And with that in mind, there's certain things we could buy that could really preserve wealth. Mm-hmm. And you know, help keep things going. And I know it's a topic that we've kind of, you know, touched on before and, and there's always like good things that are, you know, worth taking note to prepare. But, you know, I mean, we really try and be all about prepping and, and, you know, being prepared for what's coming. And I got to say, it's kind of important that we, uh, you know, have the supplies on hand. It'll make life a lot easier. And it's definitely a great way to preserve your money as we seem to be losing it faster and faster. Um, I know Janet Yellen has, uh, she's talking a lot lately about how there's, um, there's a lot of, uh, you know, we're not really heading to a recession, she says, but seriously, then they keep saying, well, maybe a minor recession. And the thing is in the mm-hmm. past, they never said, oh, there's a recession coming. Because right. they always try and keep that on the down low because that tends to escalate things. Right. Speeds it up. It speeds it up. And so they always try and play like, oh, well, that's not, you know, something you need to worry about. And so when they actually say, well, there might be a little one coming, then right. that's because they don't want to look like complete idiots who didn't know, you know, that something was about to get, you know, whacked in the head with a two by four. Mm-hmm. So. There are some things out there that, you know, are pretty important that I think you could go out and spend some money. And like I said, a lot of it is more preserving wealth, but with useful items that you're going to use. So I like to think like the consumable items, you know, the things Mm -hmm. that you're going to keep using and are going to disappear. And one of the big things that comes to mind with me is, is lumber, you know, like two by fours and. And, and that, I have a pretty good stockpile. The house that I have, I mean, th- this isn't my exact stockpile, but, you know, you get the idea. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the idea is I have a bunch of, like, dog kennels in the back, and I just, I, I don't have a bunch of dogs. I have two dogs, but I, I put, uh, like, lumber in one. I have my rabbits in another one. I have, you know, shingles and roofing stuff. I have another one filled with all fencing materials. And it kind of looks like a lumber yard, but because it's protected by a roof and whatever, it's, it does a reasonable job of preserving it. And that's something, you know, when two by fours are what, $3 and 40 cents each or $2 and 40 cents each. Yeah. It's more, a lot more than that up here. No. Oh yeah, wait. Yeah. Maybe where you are, I think it's three forty three or something where I am. Yeah, and, no, I'm uh, looking around four dollars, uh, five dollars for a for eight foot two by four. Yeah, so I don't know, better me than you. And you know what? Actually, I noticed when I moved down south, is our two by fours actually are straight in the store. What? What? It's, it's not like a boat building section. Because <laughs> I know when I was in New York, and so what I think is. When they pick out the stuff for here, they just pull all the good shit. And then they're like, all right, all this crap's left yeah. over. Let's set it up north. Mm-hmm. I guess all the wood, you know, comes from our pine trees down here in the south. But so what else, Kevin? Uh, I, I know um, like one of the things I'm big on is like chainsaw chains and, you know, garden tools like that. Uh, mower blades, mower belts. I almost always have on hand, you know, some of that extra stuff. Right. That, you know, that's kind of huge that like 
because it sucks when you know you got a big huge yard or even a small yard and you're cutting it and then oh the belt broke now i gotta wait two weeks to get a belt you know that that's kind of a problem right now it's i mean there's a lot of stuff like that that you you want to have a backup for just so you don't have to run to the store and stop your project midway you know what i mean yeah exactly a lot of these those things are also climbing in price every single day um you know, having having those extra lawnmower blades and those those chainsaw blades on hand is is a big help. The lumber, you know, there's a lot of things, uh, a lot of things like that that is important. You know, would not be a, a bad idea to have uh, oil stocked up for your for your vehicles just to right. change oil. You know, those things are going up now. I saw egg prices are finally starting to drop, and I looked into it, and apparently it's because so many people uh, started raising their own chickens. It's one of the reasons, you know what I mean? A lot of people are out of the market. They're not buying eggs anymore because they've got their own, um, which I mean, I think that's a positive sign. That's great. More people doing uh, doing their own stuff for themselves is, uh, you know, that's a, a plus in my book. Right. No, exactly. Um, I know I looked at, uh, you know, somebody mentioned uh, in the comments here about, you know, getting a sawmill and it's time for that. Yeah, there's that Woodland Mills had one. It was like it's like thirty five hundred for a pretty big one. I'm, I just tried to pull it up now to kind yeah. of get a, a th- price on there for you. And and they, I only saw a portable one, which kind of came with wheels and a trailer. I don't know, wasn't the one that I was looking at before. But I mean, they have pretty cool, you know, sawmills. You can get into that cheap if you got big property. I mean, obviously, that's only an issue if. You got substantial trees on your property. Yeah, if you have lumber to, to to mill, right. But something like that and, you know, extra saw blades or whatever is somewhere you can park your money that's going to be a valuable real thing. Now, obviously, these things are coming after you have your food supply squared away. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the basics that, you know, you need, but then you want to think, you know, hey, can I get outside? But yeah, the consumer everything that we're are, talking about is after your food and water is set. I mean, those are obviously the most important those things are the uh, essential to take one. care of. And, right. and that's one of the things I, I think about is I look at people don't have water set aside. And I have in my barn, I guess I have a uh, about 15 gallons of water that, that I just keep there mm-hmm. because it sucks when you run out of water and if you're like hey i don't know whatever i can just grab some of these gallons of water it's no problem you know and and because the where i store them it's not a deal if it it doesn't really freeze it's a pretty well insulated room but um Mm -hmm. you know where i am it's not really a thing but uh that's definitely something you need to do is water and food and it doesn't have to be the fancy long-term you know food storage from like my patriot supply or or one of these guys, but it needs to be food that's going to last, you know, maybe a year or something with a, a decent shelf life. Right. Um, I don't know. What are you thinking? Well, I mean, a lot of that, a lot of the things that people, uh, that people store, um, you know, you want, you want it long-term, long-term storage just because, you know what I mean? It, well, it's sitting on your shelf even before anything happens, you know? You don't want to, uh, uh, all of a sudden the grocery stores are closed and you open up and everything's expired. You know what I mean? You open up your cabinet. Uh, yeah. A lot of that stuff, you know, it, it'll go bad after six months or so. Right. And that's fine if you're rotating your stocks. But, uh, right. you know, I see a lot of people recommend storing bleach. Um, okay. And that's a that's a great idea. Bleach is, is useful for a lot of things. But the truth is you got a good six months before it really starts to, to go bad. So... With bleach, you know, is one of the things that we talk about right now um, for long-term storage. You want to make sure that you're keeping it in a in a cold, dark place. Right. Uh, you don't be have able it to get years out of your bleach if it's right. in a cold, dark place. But... Right. UV light, even in, in the plastic containers, that UV light will go right through it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and it'll it'll eat eat it up. So you know, it's definitely something you want to keep, you know, in your basement or something like that. You know. Right. Um, keeping it out of the sun and keeping it from, from getting warm. 
Right. Yeah. No, you can buy uh, a lot of the pool places have like the tablets for the bleach and the more hard. Those are, those are, those are more expensive, but they last yeah. a lot longer. Right. If you're, you know, looking at going that way. Mm-hmm. I also used to uh, treat the water in my house and I would go buy the, the pool supply mm-hmm. stuff and buy the big, you know, five gallon. Is that what it is? Five gallons. Yeah. I don't know. The big containers they have and they were right. like 13 bucks or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I was actually working through them. But again, you have concentrated and, you know, it's on hand, which is nice. right. Right. So that stuff you buy from the uh, from the pool place is uh, 12 and a half percent. Okay. And uh, the bleach you get from your grocery store is about six percent. So okay, so it's, you're getting it's a more, double. It's not, yeah, yeah, it's not it's crazy. Lot, it's more powerful for sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, regular bleach is pretty damn powerful. You can empty a bottle of bleach out and fill it with water and and dump that out, and that's going to be clean water. You know what I mean? That's uh, you can do that five or six times uh, with how powerful the bleach is as far as uh, antibacterial properties and things like that. It's great. Right. It's a really useful thing to have around. Exactly. No. no um, another thing I like to stock up on is duct tape. Duct tape I don't, and whiskey. There's never enough duct tape. Yeah, there you go. There's never enough duct tape in the world. You know, if you can't fix it with duct tape and WD forty, it's not worth having. Yeah. Um, one of the comments here, uh, Uncle Whiskey, there was about you know the harvest rate freeze dryers. Right? They're mm-hmm. freaking awesome but they're expensive as hell and he's like oh moose salmon you know all that stuff up north that you're grabbing you know to be able to preserve it it's funny i was just looking online at uh like salt curing meat which it turns out there's nothing to that it's mm-hmm. not hard at all and i kind of in my mind was like well there's something more to it that i'm missing right because and it, it turns out there's not um I'll end up, I'll do a short video and, and throw it up for you guys on how to do it. But anyway, the uh, salt curing meat, I was looking at uh, that Azure Standard has, mm-hmm. they're like a, uh, kind of like a Sam's Club, but there's no membership. It's pretty awesome. I mean, you become a member, but it's free. So that's why right. I no membership, no fee, right? Mm-hmm. So you become a member and they basically truck this stuff to like a drop point. So basically, if you order a lot of stuff or maybe you're in a church group or something and you're like, hey, I'd like to be the drop point, drop it Mm -hmm. at my house and everybody can come pick up their stuff. And I was like, oh, there's not going to be one near me. And sure enough, like 30 minutes away, I can go to Mm -hmm. some lady's house and they'll drop off, you know, with the truck. And they're like, yeah, shipping for your fee pound bucket of salt will be, uh, you know, four ninety five. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. all right, I like that, you know. Uh-huh. And and that's but ways to buy in bulk like that, you know, are really a great place to start if you're you know, looking up building up your food storage. Now, mind you, I was talking to another girl. Uh, my wife was like, "Oh, this other farm, they use it," and the lady was like, "Yeah, well, I kind of forgot how bulk everything is." And she's like, "We ordered raisins, and now like I have like a five gallon bucket of raisins, <laughs> and I'm never gonna, you know." Yeah never going to use that. So, you know, it it depends, you know, it's better if you have somebody you can kind of work with or whatever, or you have certain items that you're really looking at doing bulk. Mm -hmm. Um, I hear actually, you know how we've heard rumors in the day, they're like, Oh, the government's going to try and outlaw beef, you know, California with production and things like (laughs) that. They come up with all these weird things. The last one I heard for the environment now is they want to ban rice. Because uh-huh. growing rice could be bad for the planet. Yeah. I, think what I mean, they mean, is people living is bad right. for the planet. And, yeah, that's yeah. really the truth, the the fact, right? Got to get rid of some of these people. There's just too many yeah. of them. Yeah. So we had chainsaw chains and mower belts and, you know, mower blades and all this stuff. But uh, there's a lot of other garden tools that are mm-hmm. like super useful. But also, like, I know doing more the like farm life. Um, they become consumables. So like we do the the digging forks Mm -hmm. and things like that. And I get maybe two seasons. Now my wife says it could be because I'm a jackass and I get too aggressive and, you know, force things (laughs) that I shouldn't, but you know, whatever. But what my point is, is the ones that you're replacing and using a lot. Right. You should be, you know, 
working with. You right, right. And have enough that, that, you know, and and don't invite Chuck over to, to your house to abuse exactly. your tools, you know? And the thing is, like, compared to my kids, I'm a rock star at, like, preserving tool life. Uh you know, right. Well, I mean that the main uh, the main trick to preserving your tools is to not leave them out in the rain. You know. Yes. That's now, the main the main trick to preserving your tools is to put them away when you're done with them. Oh, and letting the sun and the rain rot the wood on the handles, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, I have I have like a, I think a gravel rake where the handle is like a thirty degree angle, you know, bowed in the middle, and I'm like, uh -huh. I don't even know what happened here. Um, <laughs> Slow burn pointed out that really your all your tools you should be sharpening yourself and right dude, right I've tried to master this whole chainsaw chain sharpening that's the only one that's kicked my ass yeah yeah no i'm i'm holes, the same way with that things yeah but the chains I, mean, I had a guy in new york who like eight bucks a chain and what i did i actually bought like 13 chains over time because i just kept buying new ones but now I have mm -hmm. like a big rotation. I can take the bag to the guy and I'm like, yeah, just sharpen all these. I'll be back in a week, you know? And, right. And better than $30 a chain, you know, getting them sharpened for eight. But mm -hmm. now I, I found a place that uh, I, I haven't found a good guy to sharpen them where I am locally. So, uh, but I found on Amazon, I can get like three of the chains I use for like 35 bucks brand new. I'm like, oh, uh, that's well, not bad. You no, know, that's, you know, I can't. Yeah. So I just started buying those in bulk and, uh, I'm going through it and same thing. I just keep all the old chains because one day I'm going to find the guy who can sharpen them again. Right. Yeah, Adam's where you are, does it? And it, it's pretty great, but you know, oh, do I they? I didn't yeah, know that. Yeah. So yeah. I couldn't, well, the one in Poughkeepsie, but mm -hmm. the, the, the big power, but anyway. Yeah. Um, so uh, multi-tools, it turns out for me, multi-tools are a consumable like leather mm -hmm. boots and, and like that. Um, and they're, pretty freaking expensive 50 60 bucks but how cool were you if you were buying them when they were 20 and 30 bucks right and you stockpile it's same yeah. idea it all just keeps going up the right prices are like, are yeah you yeah. know they go up they never go down you right. know it right. goes up with inflation you know and then it never backs down it goes up because the the supply chain was messed up and the supply chain gets fixed and prices and stay, stay the up. same yeah yeah i was happy to see lumber come way back down um, I mean, it, it really is down from where it was, uh, mm -hmm. even if you're telling me it's still pretty high, you know, I know, but 10 bucks at two by four, that was, you know, those are some times, right? Right. Right. Um, Another thing that I, I'd like to have stocked up on is, is, uh, nails and screws. Um, obviously I go through a lot more screws, uh, but with the power out, you know, running a running power tools on a generator is a good way to suck thing, suck up your fuel, you know, um, hammering a couple of nails is, uh, is, uh, fairly e easy and inexpensive and, you know, same thing. Prices just keep going up. Having a yeah. big box of nails and a, a few big boxes of screws is, uh, a great right. way to go. So I, I work in a, uh, a big factory, you know how it is. And, mm -hmm. uh, so we throw out all kinds of stuff cause that's how we do things. You know, I don't know. So I ended up scoring all these uh, bins with the little cubbies, like kind of like if you think of the old mailroom slot, you know, then uh -huh. you have the 50, you know, when they sorted mail and right. they have the, the bunch of, so I have the little metal bins, you know, the gray, maybe made by Vidmar or something like that. Who knows? And uh, I scored a bunch of these. Well, I have like a section that's just filled with like different gun parts and like mm -hmm. I stockpile gun parts cause I'm kind of weird, but uh and then I have another that's just stacks and stacks of screws, nails, staples. And mm -hmm. dude, nails are no joke. It's like, or screws. If you want decent uh, outdoor screws, you're looking at like 35 bucks for a five pound right. you know, box. But what I found is if I'm buying like a one inch, a two and a half inch, a three inch or whatever, I have the right size for the right thing and I'm not wasting Cause how many right. times have you done a project where you're using two and a half inch screws, but you really only need one. Right. You, you only know, needed a one like, and a half inch. Right. right. And you're, you're actually throwing money away there, but that's something you can really get ahead of on inflation and even better if you can, you know, watch for the time to buy it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, another thing I like to stockpile. You guys probably never thought of this. 
is ammo. Oh and yeah. Ammo's, ammo's Nobody ever thought about that. Price right now. Right. Um, I know that if you checked out ammoseek.com, they were a sponsor of ours for a little while. Right. Um, actually right. really great guys. I was happy to work with and somebody yeah. I definitely could get behind supporting. Mm -hmm. Um is uh ammo seek just helps you sort out the right uh the right um you know place to buy it and find it and uh they're great but yeah have that one dude i was able to sell so much stuff during the pandemic mm -hmm. that you know because they were like oh ammo is a million dollars now you know the government was out to get it somehow the government's out to get us right now but everyone's just like yeah whatever i don't Mm -hmm. I don't fine. even need to worry about it because they're yeah. yeah, just they're always <laughs> out to get us, you know. Uh, 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 yeah, I I got one. I'll remind remind me at the end. But uh, Pennsylvania has some genius gun laws coming out. So all right, they, I'm excited. We're, we're gonna we're gonna get into that because yeah, right. they 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 kill me. Um, another thing that's awesome is uh batteries. Yeah, batteries are huge. Um. Now, here's the thing, though. So, you know me. I've been in the, the prepping world here for a long time now. And so my uh, bug out bag, like, eh, my bug out bag is kind of, I don't really plan to bug out, right? So right. it's more of a stay at home bag. But it's kind of more a sea bag filled with all my supplies of, you know, stuff that I need to be able to find when it's time. You right. know, or if I'm taking the truck and I'm like, all right, I'm going out in the woods, whatever. So it's like that. But what I did is I would buy like the 48 thing of batteries and I would throw one in there and then I would have one that I'm using and I'd rotate through them. Mm -hmm. And Duracell has the big, Oh, 10 years. You're, you're great for 10 years. Don't, don't sweat it. Yeah. And uh, dude, I pulled a bunch out the other day and dude, it's like four years old, this mm -hmm. 48 and like three quarters of them didn't even work at all. And some of them oh, were shit. like had cake coming out of them. Yeah. I'm like, what a piece of crap. <clears throat> and of course, you know, they're guaranteed, right? So maybe I could call somebody and work something out. But right. I think I did that. You could spend you could spend three hours figuring out how to do that and maybe get your your fifteen dollars back. So right. So my point is just be aware of, you know, it's maybe not as great as it could be, and just make sure you're rotating through. And, yeah, 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 and there is really different on top of your storage. Yeah. yeah, there is different grades of batteries too. I mean, generally speaking, the more expensive, the more money you're spending, the better quality you're going to get. But if you're going to buy a bunch of bulk batteries, I would do a little research first. I think Energizer yeah. is the 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 longest lasting Duracell. I think the best bang for your buck I that I Duracell found were is great. And then yeah. yeah, I mean, I always was buying Energizer, and then Sam's Club uh, switched to Duracell, and I was disappointed. Mm -hmm. But uh, I was like, all right, yeah. I'll stick. But with I mean, it's the same thing with Energizer. They'll say ten years, but you know, who knows what it's going to yeah. be? I, you know, nine years in, what are you looking at, really? You know, and uh, you know, I think the best bang for your buck I found is like a the Amazon brand. Uh, thing of batteries. So if you have an Amazon account and you want to order a bunch of bulk batteries, that's the best, right. the best bang for your buck. Um, then they're, they're not going to last as long as the as the Duracells and the and the Energizer. But you know what I mean? Right. It's yeah, money is always a factor. Well, exactly. Well, that's thing. Um, you know, I'm seeing here in the comments a lot of people are switching to uh, to archery and uh, bows and arrows. You know, a lot more consumable renewable we'll say they're probably worried about the planet is my guess but uh mm -hmm. you know um no, <laughs> I'm, I'm just messing with you the uh the uh the idea with archery though is i mean they are the, the arrows do last and you know somebody's talking about uh you know making your own bow and i gotta say i did that with one of my kids he was like really in archery and and it's funny because I bought them like a reasonably fancy bow, you know, by kids' standards. It was a uh, fancy compound bow. bow. And he's like using one that he made with a stick. And he's like, mm. but it's mine. And, right. and I made it. And it's mine. And and I love that. You know, that's that's how it should be is, you know, that real connection. But so we ended up going on. Uh, oh, what There was one of those websites. uh where you could like they showed you how to make everything yourself. I don't remember what it was called, but uh, uh -huh. 
and they had the kind of how to on making your own bow and like piecing the wood together and building it out in stages Composite. and right and it just so we ended up making him you know a custom bow and doing that and i gotta say it's pretty freaking awesome and and spending your time with your kids and your family and doing that so learning how to make your own bow and make your own arrows and do that stuff that's pretty cool and and like i said it's a great you know hobby and things that you can do with your family to kind of connect and and you know stay together so nothing wrong with that that's definitely a great way to be and and bows are awesome and you can really you know we've all seen rambo right right i mean it's you just got to put those exploding tips plus, on there you shoot a trick plus truck and the whole silent, thing and right? close up. you're silent yeah. and <laughs> silent but deadly right there you go yeah no it's uh it's that's that's great you know one of the other things i i looked at is um you know uh just general hygiene prod products you know that's really yeah. something that you can stock up on toothbrushes toothpaste um baby wipes those baby wipes you have to be conscientious you open that package and then leave it for for a month and it's going to be all dried out you know you want to make sure you have something with those baby wipes keep some moisture uh the toilet paper mountain big big deal you gotta keep that butthole clean yeah you yeah. know that's basic standards if you ever want to get get head from a girl gotta have that's a clean butthole key. you'll never get a second never get a second chance at that no. you know <laughs> you don't just just wipe your butt and smear it on the back of your your ball sack and expect uh expect somebody to be enthusiastic about it and then we watch the listener number just drop down. <laughs> nothing. All the women are cheering though, because they all agree They're with me. They know what I'm okay. talking about. I, um, how about uh, you know, soap is another one. Uh, when we're talking about hygiene, yeah, just bars of soap. It's very inexpensive, and they can sit in a cabinet forever. You know, um, making your own soap that's a lot cheaper. You know, yeah, and it's a fairly easy process if if you want to get into it, but it does involve a few, uh, you know, a few items to have from the from the store, some big pots and and trays and things like that. So something to keep in mind. Right. But it's definitely something that I I uh, I stock up on. You know, personally, I think it's worthwhile having you know ten tubes of toothpaste and a couple of uh, big boxes of barred soap. Yeah. Now. Yeah, so a lot of people are uh, another thing with the archery too. Sorry, not to jump around here a little bit, but with the archery, you get an extra ten or sometimes even as much as a month extra in uh, your hunting season. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, I don't know. I'm just saying, it, there's a lot of bonuses to archery. Yeah, and, there is, uh, and you know, it is like another skill to develop and and like that. Um, I, I know some places New York sucked where you had to take a separate eight hour class to uh, do archery hunting versus, you know, rifle hunting. So you had to do the rifle hunting and the archery class mm -hmm. um, it, where I am in the South. We, uh, they just have one hunting license and it kind of covers it all. And you just so, shoot everything you see. And you just shoot everything you see. It doesn't matter. New York, we had the hunting uh, rifle trapping and archery. Whereas uh, here you could just get away with, uh, you with know, whatever, one hunting huh? license. Yeah. yeah. You're just, oh, you're, you can hunt now. So you got it covered. Right. Um, so yeah, you were saying all the soap, uh, toothpaste. I definitely have a reasonable amount. Hopefully toothpaste doesn't get away from us in the budget. Um, right. Another thing is uh, medication, antibiotics, things mm -hmm. like that. Um, even like triple antibiotic. That's something you could really, you know, these are all things that are really going to, you know, preserve your wealth though. They're, they're mm -hmm. going to, you're going to buy now and you're never, there's no chance of you not using it. You know, it's right. not like, Oh, you're going to stop using toilet paper. You know, now I'm not talking about, you maybe don't need the toilet paper to the ceiling. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying really go to, you know, beyond. And right. also, you know, they are potential for rodents and things like that to get into your supplies. So it's mm -hmm. something you want to be aware of, but you know, it, you know, that's all I get. Yeah. You know, you know, yeah, no, one of those, one of the, one of the other ones that I uh, want to talk about real quick is, is uh, candles. Um, 
I think a lot right. of people underestimate candles as far as uh as far as a lighting source go. Oh, I've got my generator, you know, I've got this, I've got that, you know. I don't have to worry about the candles. It's it's a great thing to have stocked up. Just just like flashlights, you know, a candle do it doesn't make a bunch of noise, you know, with the generator like the generator does. And uh, you know, and a, even a candle is even enough that you can warm your hands up on a cold right. night. It's not going to keep you from freezing to death, but um, you know, there's a little bit of warmth factor there too. Usually right. uh, with power outages and stuff, I usually set those candles up by mirrors and kind of double, double that light up a little bit. But um, you know, having, having a, a drawer full of ca candles isn't a bad idea. Right. Another, another big uh, prepper tip that I keep seeing, like the flashlight and lighting. Mm -hmm. um, that stuff's huge. And that, you know, kind of goes hand in hand with the batteries. Um, I always really liked uh, N, N Loop. It's E N E L O O P, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they're made by Panasonic, but they do uh, rechargeable batteries that seem to have like 2,000 <laughs> mm -hmm. 2, uh, hours. And uh, they, they see, or sorry, 2,000 recharge. You know, right, cycles. recharges. Yeah. And uh, so that's kind of awesome. And I've had great success with those. Uh, but flashlights, that kind of thing, that's a great place to spend some money. But it's funny because I had bought a lot of mag lights and stuff. And now they seem so outdated compared to the stuff that you get now. The you new know, LED and, flashlights. Yeah. There's yeah. Just different things that, you know, time is always. Yeah. But those little. Those little LED flashlights, you can't really bash somebody's head head in with, no, with one no, of those. You don't you know? have the staying power. You right. Know? Um, yeah, so there's that. Uh, another thing is fire starting equipment. Um, just And uh -huh. again, this is not going to preserve your wealth, but <clears throat> just having a bunch of wooden matches, having lighters yeah. set aside everywhere is another awesome you know, thing to do. Mm -hmm. Another thing people don't think about is seeds. Um, right. Seeds are more expensive than you think. Um, mm -hmm. But having a decent supply of, you know, seeds on hand for the next year. But again, that's something at best, you're probably going to get five years of a decent shelf life. And that's, that's true. They're like vacuum packed and, you know, ready yeah, to go. That's true. I had some, some issues this year with uh, some of my seeds that were a little bit old and I planted them and nothing came up, you know? Yeah. And nothing worse than planting bad seeds, going through the effort and doing it, and then having to go out and get more seeds and, and start over again uh, two weeks too late, you know? Right. And, you know, back to the, the tools is, uh, you know, so grease, Kevin mentioned oil, that kind of stuff. But a yes. big thing is you need to uh, take care of the stuff you have. Right. You know, we were saying, you know, sharpen your stuff, take care of your tools, kind of oil them up when you're preserving them. Um, you know, when you're setting them aside for a while, it's just like a gun. You know, you put a little extra oil on it when you're planning on not using it for a while. Right. And same thing with your tools. A little oil will keep that moisture and stuff from getting corroded. Um, greasing. Uh, you know, I was just crying about my tractors like, oh, you should grease all the fittings every uh, 10 hours. And I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, that's a lot. That's excessive. And then my freaking uh, tiller kind of uh, had issues. One of the pins had backed out. Uh -huh. It's crooked, and I had to pull the PTO off where I couldn't really move it. That's where it connects, like, the spinning. Right. And I'm like, oh, this thing's kind of seized on there. I haven't greased it in a little bit. And, <laughs> I mean, I say a little bit, but it wasn't. It was probably, like, 15 hours, you know? Right. But I just, I'm not taking the tiller on and off much, you know, in mm -hmm. the, the beginning of the harvest season. Right. It just kind of stays there and like it kind of locks up and is that grease disappears. So I'm just mm -hmm. saying, take care of your stuff, you know, put a little effort in, uh, you know, keeping it, uh, keeping it taken care of. Cause yeah. That, now really another thing I want to spend money and then let it sit. And right. And then let it go bad. But go right. ahead. Yeah. One of the things I wanted to touch on is um, oil lamps, you know, uh, yeah. they're, they're great, you know, because you can use multiple different types of oil in there and burn it. You know, the only thing that you run out of is wicks. And so you have to keep that, you know, keep some of those things, but that goes for a lot of stuff. You know, if you've got 25 gallon cans of propane and yeah. the only thing that you can heat with propane ta <clears throat> tank is your grill, then uh, you're kind of 
wasting your wasting your time, you know? Yeah. Get the accessories and the the right equipment for the equipment that you have, you know? The battery packs that match the the tools you have, the you know, the the propane accessories uh, for the propane tanks that you're storing. Um, you've got a little camp stove. How many of those little uh, propane tanks do you have that hook up to it? Right. What can you hook those propane tanks up to exactly. that aren't, you know, that are, uh, you know, another option. There's heaters and all sorts of stuff you can, you can get with that sort of stuff. And, uh, you know, kind of pick your lane and try and try and stay in it with your, with your money. So you're not wasting, wasting it, you know? There's yeah. a lot of ways to spend money and get rid of it. Oh, yeah. You can get rid of money as fast as you can make it, you know, but there's no reason to waste it on something you're not going to use. That's, that's the thing. I mean, we have water filters and all this stuff, you know, people, all this prepper stuff. Oh, I got, you know, survival blankets and I got, mm -hmm. you know, the, the sleeping bags and the whatever, but none of that stuff is going to matter if, you don't have food at home. You don't have mm -hmm. the basics. Get the basics covered and get your family on board and, uh, you know, getting squared away where everybody's like, hey, we got the core covered. And then, like, I mean, I'm not saying you don't need a good get home bag in your car, right? That's great. Uh -huh. But people will spend thousands of dollars on prepper gadgets. Whereas it's like, you know what? Learn some skills. Uh, right. You know, watch some YouTube and actually go out and do stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Have some equipment that works. You know, um, I know some of you states that uh, they don't allow guns and stuff. I know, uh, I think Pennsylvania and a few others are like, oh, we don't want to have guns in cars and like stupid things. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. it's not worked out yet. But How am I going to shoot people when I get in my road things. rage fits? Right, exactly. This is ridiculous. Um, but that's the thing. So. Dukes of Hazard, they always had the bow in the car. That's right. They, That's right. Because they were like felons. Remember, they were mm -hmm. on probation from uh Bow and Luke from Moonshine. From moonshine. Right. Uh-huh. So now that's that's definitely uh you know something to think about with the bow. Sorry, I know I'm kind of jumping around <laughs> here. I just can't help it. You were it, talking about um like, yeah, you were talking about some some gun laws in uh Pennsylvania. All right. Is that Let what you're tell you what I saw here? Well, yeah. So yeah, actually that was one of the things that uh, there was a, a there's a new house bill for uh Pennsylvania. And again, it hasn't passed. All right. So this is just proposed. Right. But it, it's just one of those things. Once they start proposing stupid ass shit, then everyone's like, Yeah, that's yeah, a great a idea. We should all do that, right? Mm -hmm. So it might come slow, but so this is uh for, would go into effect January 1, 2024, if it passed. Mm -hmm. What they want is all ammunition sold in Pennsylvania must have a serial number, wait, on the brass and on the bullet in a place that is unlikely to be damaged on impact. What? I don't even know what that means. It, yeah. Yeah. So and so they want a serial number basically on the box, the bullet, and the the casing. Now I guess like a box of fifty, all mm -hmm. fifty could have the same serial number, but it would be tied to the box. Okay. Like so they can know, so they can find the like, shell and go to your house and match it up to the box that you've and got. Match it up, right? At exactly. Home. Or you know, right. oh, this this was sold at gun store so and so. You right. Know, even better. This is the part that I really love. Like one, that's damn near impossible, right? When you think of the manufacturing issues. Right. But but then you as the private citizen are required to dispose of all your non-serialized ammo by January 1st. The fuck does that even mean? I got to use up all my shit? shit? All, yeah. Dude, or throw all, it in the garbage? Yeah. Yeah. That's. I don't know if I hate enough people to be able to use up all my right? ammo. How are you? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I'm not in Pennsylvania, but I mean, that sort of stuff, you know, that sort of stuff leaks into other states when it starts, uh, yeah, when they start exactly. passing dumb you laws know, like that, you, you know, can, how many stupid laws did they pass in California that ended up being enacted in a bunch of other states after? I know New York's always down to jump on whatever California is doing. They're right. Like, They're always on board. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. California's cutting edge. If we were cool like them. Uh -huh. I, I don't know if that's that's something but 
there's so much of that stupid shit going on. And it just, I know California, they were always trying to do that micro stamping. Remember they were going to do the serial numbers on the, they, they wanted some way. I think California's big plan was they wanted the gun to stamp a serial number when you shot it. Okay. That makes sense. That right? makes, yeah. It was going to, so it would like, Oh, that was that guy. <laughs> but I, I don't know when they do the, uh, uh, the uh, ballistics checks, they seem to be able to match the gun to the barrel. I don't know. I, I so That's just on TV. It's so not real things. life, dude. I, well, that's, you know, we don't have things like facts and evidence. And, yeah. Yeah, no. They, they always say, like, the NCIS stuff. They're like, yeah, that, yeah. that all can be done. Yeah, it just is never done. Yeah, you know? Why is it? Yeah, why are we still at, like, 50%, 50 yeah. range of, of solving murders? You know what I mean? Like... You can't do can't do better than that. You can't do like, because you know nine times out of ten it's the husband or the wife that did it. You know, yeah. I don't understand. I don't understand all these murders just going unsolved. Can't, yeah. nope, can't figure it out. Exactly. Whatever. Nah, it's it's crazy. But that's, I mean, the idea is find a way to preserve your wealth, though. Find a way to preserve your stores, to have the things that you need. You know, we gave you a good list here of things that, you know, you could be stockpiling that are more the consumable items, things that you can, you know, preserve <clears throat> and, and know that you're going to use. Um, and, you know, even like, hey, I'm going to replace my roof in the next year or two. Buy the shingles if you think that they're at a reasonable price, you know, right. whatever. Things like that. That's where you want to get ahead. But, you know, you guys, it's it's all about, you know, preserving your stuff and having the supplies you need, but be thoughtful with where you spend your money. Right. And, and that's where it all falls apart is, you know, have a plan that, Hey, I'm actually going to use this, you know, mm -hmm. don't buy all the long-term stuff that nobody's going to eat or, right. you know, it, it would be like buying, you know, ammo in a caliber that you don't use, you know, right. just th think ahead. Um, also, yeah. and be careful with your storage that you're, yeah. yeah, be careful with your storage that you're not ruining all the stuff that you bought too. You know, right. if your basement floods sometimes, don't store your toilet paper down there. You know, that's not the way to do it. Yeah. All right. So, anyway, be great if you guys could uh, like and subscribe. You know, that always pays off for us. Uh, it helps the algorithm, helps people find us. Um, the more people that are watching, the more better content we can put out you know the more time we can devote to it and you know come up with better quality for you guys uh we are doing some new stuff here that's going to help us step up our game i think i got a lot of new videos coming out uh that are going to be kind of you know put together and images and different things and kind of you know i ordered a tripod so things are really gonna you know we're, we're upping the quality to a whole new levels. So be excited about that. Um, if you guys haven't checked out our YouTube channel and it's uh, just search prepping badass on YouTube and definitely give it a subscribe because that's huge for us. But also, like I said, I got a lot of new stuff coming out in the next two or three weeks. So, you know, be on the lookout for that. It's going to be good. And yeah, mm -hmm. people are like, oh, you don't even have any ads. I uh, know that's because I don't have enough subscribers yet for YouTube to even, you know, give us attention. YouTube's like, yeah, you guys are just amateurs. Mm -hmm. It's funny because we're actually pretty cutting <clears throat> edge with our downloads of uh, the podcast. We're like mm -hmm. considered, I guess, by downloads, we're in like the top 1% of all podcasts which that's pretty freaking amazing. Is that true? That's there true. are there are right. a lot of shitty podcasts out There's there. There's a though. lot of shitty podcasts. So yeah. yeah, if you're, you know, we're the king of the, you know, <laughs> of the terrible when podcasts. When it comes to YouTube, I feel like we put out some quality here and and we right. entertain you guys. But yeah, we're just getting into it. We never really put real effort into the YouTube channel, and I'd say what it's been about three four months now that we've mm -hmm. been really trying to do consistent quality effort out here for you guys so we appreciate you sticking around and and you know watching it but anyway if you could subscribe to the youtube channel that would be awesome um if you guys uh leave comments things like that give us a rating on uh wherever you're downloading the podcast and hey share it on facebook tell your friends um 
we really appreciate it and it just helps grow and remember the more people that are prepared out there the less people are coming to take your stuff you know that's right um i mean that's really what it comes down to so questions concerns email us at prepping badass at gmail.com otherwise i would say stay safe and we will talk to you guys next week Thank mm-hmm. you.